All right, I have this packet of seeds. They are called morning glories, and aren't they beautiful? All right, I have this packet of seeds. Do you think if I opened up this pack of seeds, do you think I'm gonna find a plant inside? No, I am not gonna find a plant in here. I am just gonna find some seeds. I'm not gonna find these flowers in this packet. What's in this packet, these seeds will grow into these flowers if I do the right things to them and if they have enough sunlight and water and all of that. But in this packet is just the seeds. And in order for them to grow, they're gonna need me to do certain things. They're gonna need me to plant them in good soil. And they're gonna need me to make sure that they get water and they're gonna need sunlight. Because if I take away all the things a plant needs, it's not going to grow. Now, just like these plants, God wants everyone to know about him to worship him and to grow in faith in him. But before that can happen, people have to hear about him. It's crazy for me to believe, and I think Miss Kim, when she came to visit us, like back when we started talking about um, Christmas around the world, like seems like so long ago, she told us the number of people in the world that did not know about Jesus. And it was like a really big number. Do you guys remember that? I wish I could remember the number. I can't off the top of my head, but it was a whole bunch of digits made up that number. But not everyone in the world has heard about God, and not everybody has heard that Jesus came and he lived the perfect life we couldn't live, and he died the death that we deserve to die, and that he raised from the dead so that he could save us from our sins. Not everybody has heard about that. And so people need to be told by somebody who has already heard about Jesus. And telling people about Jesus is like planting a seed, like these seeds that I have. It is the first step to that person um, having a faith, somebody having a faith in Jesus is the first step is just hearing. And so we think about our story with Philip and the Ethiopian. So Philip knew about Jesus and wanted others to know about God's plan of salvation. The man in the chariot was from Ethiopia, an African country. And it's not known how far this man had come to Israel um, to hear about the one true God. But it is clear that he worshiped God and he studied and he wanted to know more about him. And so the Ethiopian man, he was studying a scroll. And, and you may have seen scrolls, but it's like a type of book that you kind of unroll and you can roll back up. But he was reading that, which contained part of God's word. So a long time ago, like the in the Bible days, they didn't have the whole Bible put together like we did. We are so um, blessed by God to live on this side of the cross and where we are in time so that we can actually have the Bible, all of it in front of us. But back then, people just had parts of it. They just had little bits and pieces of the Bible on these scrolls and they would read them and that's how they would learn. And so that's what this Ethiopian man was doing one day. Now, have you ever read something and needed someone to explain what it meant? I'm pretty sure we all have. Like, I read books sometimes, like, that Josh gives me. Like, Josh, like, knows a lot of big words, and he knows all kinds of theology, which is, like, all about God and stuff. He knows a lot of those things that I want to know more about, but I don't understand it. And so, if I don't understand it, what do I need to do? Well, I could ask Josh. I could ask him, hey, Josh, I read this, and I don't know what it means. Could you help me? And he can probably help me with a lot of the questions that I have about theology. Well, the Ethiopian man knew how to read the words in the scroll, but he didn't understand that God's word was describing the Messiah. So he was confused. He didn't know about Jesus. He didn't know that part. So he had learned as much as he could, but he needed somebody to help him with the rest of it. And he wanted to know God and God um, provided understanding for him. So um, the angel, like we remember, he visited Philip and told him to go to the chariot. And, and we talked about how Philip had immediate obedience and he listened to what God said and he went right away to the chariot. Can you think of some other Bible truths that we've studied this year that involved an angel giving a message? Okay, one would be Gideon. An angel came to Gideon and gave him a message. And we can think about Mary, how an angel came to Mary and told her that she was going to give birth to the Son of God. That's an amazing thing the angel told her. And the woman at the tomb. Yeah, they went to the tomb just a couple weeks ago, we learned. And she went there and there was an angel that was like, oh, he's not here. And so angels came and they told people. And the man in the chariot did not know that an angel was sent to Philip to come to his chariot. So 
you know, the Ethiopian man could have been sitting there and thinking like, oh, I really wish I understood God's word better, but I don't understand it. God, help me. And God sent an angel to Philip to answer that prayer, to help the Ethiopian man understand the Bible more. Why do you think God sent Philip to the Ethiopian man? It's a good question to ask. And I think it's because God wanted the Ethiopian man to know more and to know about Jesus so that when he went back to Ethiopia, he could tell people about Jesus there. I think that was part of God's plan. It's because God wants people from every nation and every tribe and every tongue to know him and to have relationship with him. Now let's think about this for a minute. How do you think the Ethiopian man reacted when Philip asked if he understood what he read in Isaiah? I think he could have thought of a couple of things. I think he could have been surprised that somebody cared. I think he could have been like, oh, I don't know if I want to act like I don't know this. But if he wouldn't have been honest about what he knew, then he couldn't have had help. So I think he was probably wondering why a stranger was asking him about the Bible or the scroll. I think he was probably shocked that somebody would come talk to him about that. I think all those were things that the Ethiopian man could have felt. And how do you think Philip felt when the man said he was reading the book of Isaiah? Okay, Philip might have been like this, you know, like sometimes when we think about telling people about Jesus, I know for me, sometimes I think like, what if they ask me something I don't know? And I get scared because I'm like, if they never, if they ask me a question I don't know, then like, I don't want to sound like I don't know about God. And so Philip could have been super excited that the Ethiopian man asked him something he knew. He could have been like, oh, thank you, Jesus. You gave me a man who knows has questions about something I know about. I can talk to him about this. Like, yes, this is good. And so Philip could have been relieved and he could have been excited that God had given him the opportunity. And so pastors and Bible teachers today study God's word by using Bible reference books and websites and many other resources. And when Philip talked to the Ethiopian man, he told what he had learned about Jesus. It is important, boys and girls, even at your age, even being six and seven and eight, it's important for us to not be afraid to share God's word of salvation with people. Like God has come and he has given all of us a gift in Jesus. And it is so important that we speak boldly about that, just like Philip did. And so just like Philip had the spirit of the Lord, those of us who have trusted Jesus to be the Lord of our lives, we have that spirit that lives inside of us. And that same spirit can help us and give us courage to tell other people about God. And so that's what I want you to take from this today is that there are people all around you that might live uh, maybe in your house, maybe across the street, maybe down the road, maybe in another country. Who knows? There are people all around us that have never heard the good news of Jesus. And God has put us in their life for a reason, and that reason can be to tell them the good news. And so instead of being afraid of that, I think that we need to have courage and that we need to be bold and that we need to be confident that God is with us and he will help us. All he's asking us to do is just do the first step, which is like planting the seeds. All he wants us to do is plant the seeds to just say, hey, can I tell you about Jesus? Did, did you know that he loves you? And just doing that first little step, and then God will do all the work. God will do the work. We just have to be obedient to go and do what God says to do. Okay? All right. Today in our Bible page, on page 123, um, it says, Help Philip find the Ethiopian man. Then help Philip and the man get to the water for baptism. Write the words from the maze to correctly complete the sentences. So you've got to start with Philip and go through the maze to get to the Ethiopian man. And any words that you pass need to go on the lines. Okay, so boys and girls, when we get off, I'm going to pray for you. I'm going to pray that you have courage to share your faith with Jesus. Boys and girls, if you've never made a profession of faith, I'm going to pray that you have courage to ask Jesus to be the Lord of your life and to trust him that he has good plans for you. And boys and girls, I want you to know that Jesus loves you so much, so much that he died for your sins and for mine and that we could never... Um, repay him for, for what he's done for us. And I am so grateful that he loves me and that he cares for me and that he sees me and he feels the same way about you boys and girls. All right. I'll see you tomorrow for Bible time.